We're here in the Graceland Archives where our Graceland guests do not get a chance to visit while they're here, but this is your chance to get a behind the scenes look at what's in our collection. Here in the building we have everything from wardrobe to documents, photographs, as well as Elvis's personal film collection. It's all stored in a temperature controlled environment where we can preserve the items for generations to come. An example of some of the things that we have here in the building are here in this first drawer. Here you'll find uh, the original architectural drawing for Graceland. This was actually done before Elvis even owned the home. It was done in 1939. It just shows you how grand the house was for that time here in Memphis. We also have Lisa Marie's uh, footprints from when she was born on February 1st, 1968 at Baptist Hospital. And here we have Elvis's personal uh, checkbook. And for those of you who don't know, this is Elvis's handwriting. Uh, the checks vary from who they went to and what they were for. An example, this one here is to Larry Geller, who was a member of the Entourage at the time. It, the checkbook is from 1974. Um, there's a personal loan to one of Elvis's cousins, and even checks written in here for personal expenses for Elvis himself. It's amazing what Vernon kept. I mean, he kept everything. Elvis's manager, Colonel Parker, also uh, was what you would consider a pack rack and also kept everything. They kept things that happened at Graceland and things that never even happened at Graceland. Uh, for an example, these blueprints here in this drawer are for a recording studio that was to be built here on the property. In fact, it was to be built where the racquetball building currently sits. As you can see, there was a recording room and a control area, office spaces, as well as a secretarial office. It was going to be an octagon-shaped building on property, but never happened. However, they did keep the blueprints, and we have them here today. Just the sheer amount of documentation that we have on Elvis's life and career is mind-boggling. We have close to a million pieces of paper, everything from telephone bills to grocery receipts to furniture receipts. It's really uh, neat that we have in our collection not only receipts, but we have checks that pay for these receipts as well as the objects themselves. Almost everything in our collection we can tell a complete story about from our documents that we have here. When I say that Vernon kept everything, I literally mean everything. In fact, this folder that we have here are documents from when the family lived in Tupelo, Mississippi, before they even moved to Memphis. Uh, one of the first things that we have here is a postcard that Vernon wrote to Gladys and Elvis when he was actually in prison back in the late or early 40s. We have several of those, as well as water bill receipts, grocery receipts, everything from Tupelo that you can imagine. You hear a lot during the tour about Elvis coming from humble beginnings, and here is just proof of how humble those beginnings really were. It's an employee, employee's record of earnings statement for Elvis's father, Vernon, from January of 1943. Vernon made $36.22 in one week worth of work. It's just mind-boggling what we actually found, and all of this was stored in an old steamer trunk. We opened up the trunk not knowing what was going to be in there, and then we found these documentations as well as some of Elvis's uh, first grade crayon box and pencils and things like that, which was quite amazing. Some of the other documents that we have here in the collection are from various celebrities, but there are also telegrams here that were sent from Elvis and the Colonel to uh, some celebrities and friends. In fact, here is a handwritten telegram that Elvis sent to Colonel Parker's wife, Marie. Also in the folder, you'll find telegrams. This is from Barbara and Jackie Cooper. This one actually is to Colonel Tom. And then we have several. This one's from Elvis to Colonel. That's well, the way of communicating back then was via telegram, and we have telegrams to and from lots of, pe lots of people. Here's one to Frank Sinatra from Elvis and the Colonel congratulating him on the opening of Ocean's Eleven that night. A telegram to Nick Adams, who was a very close friend of Elvis's. And this is kind of funny. It's to Colonel George Burns from Colonel Parker. So as you can see in the collection, we have documents that can basically put a story really back together on who Elvis was communicating with, uh, what he was buying, uh, what he was doing in career, his career-wise. This folder, in fact, documents the concert tour that Elvis was scheduled to leave on on August 17, 1977. 
The tour was scheduled to begin in Portland, Maine. And here in the folder, we have got all of the arrangements for that tour that never happened. He was performing in Portland on August 17th and 18th, and then going to Utica, New York. Showtime was going to be at 8 and 8.30. This is just another example of some of the documentation we have here in the collection, again, of things that happened and, unfortunately, things that weren't able to happen. Here in these boxes, we have almost every check ever written by or for Elvis. In fact, if you go to the box from 1957 and we look at March, we find the earnest money check that Elvis gave to Virginia Grant, who was the realtor who helped him with uh, buying Graceland. In the notes, you can see that it was for earnest, earnest money for the Moore property. Of course, Graceland originally was known as the Moore property as it was owned by Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Moore before Elvis purchased it in March of that year. Here in these filing cabinets, we have over 60,000 images of Elvis that we use for exhibits, product, licensing, books, TV shows, and they range from everything from movie stills to family photos, concert stills, to informal shots of Elvis just hanging around here at Graceland. Some of the uh, photos that we've recently found, which were really quite amazing, uh, we found in a closet in Gladys's bedroom in a shoebox, and these are truly what you would call family photos. These are things that a mom would save of her son. Uh, there are images of Elvis from when he was in school in Tupelo, his ROTC picture, him and his cousin Gene Smith, Elvis on a bike. Uh, a lot of these images you've probably seen, uh, these are actually the originals that were used for the DVD purposes or for book projects and things that you might have seen these photos in. Also some classic photos that you might have seen before, photo booth photos that we actually found. These are the original photos that are used almost every day on uh, product and websites. And then fans would send Gladys pictures of Elvis while he was on tour. In fact, a lot of them came from Texas in 54 and 55, so Gladys could see Elvis on stage when she wasn't traveling. And so here we have uh, fans that took photos with Elvis and photos of Elvis and sent them here for his mom to have. Also here in the Artifact Building, we have uh, close to 5,000 pieces of wardrobe. Um, they're stored all in these gray acid-free boxes. We've got personal belongings, not only of Elvis's, but his mother Gladys, as well as Lisa when she was a baby. But one of the unique things that we have stored here in the building is actually stored here in this box. It's Elvis's wallet, and it's a very personal item that gives you a real insight on who Elvis was. And this is exactly the way that wallet was the last time Elvis was carrying it. And when you first open it up, you see a picture of Elvis and Lisa. Also in here, there are credit cards, business cards of uh, police officer associates, a lot of them from Beverly Hills or Denver. Uh, we also have, this is a sergeant's card, another photograph of Elvis's little girl. You know, everything that you would imagine that would be in just anyone's ordinary wallet you see right here in Elvis's. There's credit cards, uh, Sergeant Dick Martin's phone number, there's American Federation of Television and Artist card, insurance cards. There's even, here in the front, a movie ticket stub. Here we have Elvis's famous gold TCB sunglasses. As you can see, he wore these in Elvis on tour in 1972, and on each side of the sunglasses is Elvis's logo, taking care of business in a flash, the same logo that is on the tail of the Lisa Marie airplane jet. Also part of the collection here at Graceland, we have lots of hats. This one's a little unique, though. It's Elvis's army helmet. It's the one that he wore when he was stationed over in Germany, and like every other GI, Elvis even wrote his own initials inside so that people knew that it was his. Along with uh, shoes, we have stage boots stored here. This pair of shoes, however, is probably the oldest pair we have in the collection. It's a pair of black and white 50 shoes that Elvis wore on stage as well as around town back in here in Memphis back in 1954, 55, and 56. 
in the projection room down in the basement, Elvis actually stored the film that you see stored here on the shelf. These are actual copies of Elvis's movies that he would screen down in the TV room at Graceland. Also stored in there was audio as well as records, tons of records. In fact, here we have not only a record, but a letter that came with it. A, uh, shortly after hearing Elvis perform in Las Vegas, BMI sent Elvis this uh, record, this acetate actually, uh, hoping that he might find a song on here that he wanted to record. And this is the letter that accompanied it. We're now at one of our off-site facilities where we store a lot of artifacts and things that were once at Graceland. We actually have three storage facilities that are not on property, including one that has things from Elvis's L.A. house, things from Colonel Parker, but this is the one that has everything from Graceland in it. In here you'll find furniture that was once at Graceland as well as memorabilia, saddles, uh, music equipment. One uh, unique piece you might notice is this cedar chest. The cedar closet was actually up in Elvis's attic, and the unique story behind it is this is where Elvis stored his mother's belongings after her passing in 1958 when he returned home from the Army in 1960. You might notice we also have a lot of gray boxes. You might want to wonder what's in some of them. Well, all of these things are actually cataloged and in a computerized database system so that we know exactly what's in each box. For an example, this box actually contains a pair of Elvis's boots. But what's unique about them is that he wore these horseback riding. He actually has mud that is still on the boots from when Elvis wore them. As you see, we try to preserve things the way that Elvis had them versus changing them in any way. Some of the other things that we have stored here in the warehouse that was at Graceland at one time belonged to Elvis's daughter, Lisa Marie. You'll see set up here a uh, table and chairs that Lisa used to play with along with her coloring book and crayons, the commercial appeal that has her birth announcement in it, and even a pair of her baby shoes. Stored here in these gray boxes are over 30,000 artifacts that were here at Graceland. Also, we have things that have been purchased by the estate for exhibit purposes, like this prop from the movie Speedway. A few other really cool things that you might see here in the warehouse is Elvis's Polaroid camera. And in this box, we have an autographed champagne bottle that was a gift to Priscilla's parents on Elvis and Priscilla's wedding day. It's autographed from Mr. and Mrs. Elvis Presley. Here we have a nightstand from Elvis's home on Audubon Drive, which was the home he purchased before Graceland. The interesting thing about this, it's one of the few pieces of furniture we actually have from that home. This nightstand was in Elvis's bedroom. Now also here in the warehouse, for exhibit purposes, we purchased this sign from the hardware store where Elvis bought his first guitar in Tupelo. Here we have a sofa that was once in the infamous jungle room prior to the furniture that you see in there now. The other interesting thing about this sofa is that the day that Lisa came home from the hospital, Elvis and Priscilla and their new baby girl had their pictures made here on the sofa. Speaking of furniture, if you look up, you'll see furniture from Graceland throughout the years and never before seen the orange and green furniture that was once downstairs in the TV room in the basement. As we continue to walk, you'll notice here we have several of Elvis' saddles. This one you might recognize from home movie footage of Elvis riding his favorite Tennessee walker, Bear. This concludes our behind-the-scenes tour of the Graceland Archives. I'm Angie Marchese, the Director of Archives, and I hope you enjoyed your little personal tour behind the Graceland Gates.